Hey, how we doing? <laughs> that was a mime there for a second. Um, good evening. We are here at his tabernacle outside under the tent for rock solid faith. We're on chapter four. We're talking about the laying on of hands. So I'm going to open this in prayer and then Kenny's going to take over. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you, Father God, that you love us and that you want us to know your word and that your word is life. It is um, sharper than any two-edged sword, Father God. It is the word of God that dwells within us. So we thank you, Father God, for... Um, your presence in this place. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We invite you here to be with us and to pour out your spirit upon us so that we would gain wisdom and insight and <coughs> revelation through the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Okay, so we covered last week, David covered the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That goes after the water baptism. Next foundation is laying out of hand, hands. So the, this principle has been lost in the local churches. Most people believe this is for the pastor, evangelist, or some special guest that visit the church. The truth is that it is for every single believer. You can go home if you're not feeling well. You can lay hands on yourself. You can lay hands on your spouse. You can lay hands on your kids. Some people lay hands on their kids very suddenly. <laughs> So that's, sometimes that's needed. So the wisdom of the devil and the foolishness of the preachers have enabled the local churches to be powerless. Believers are seen more as pew sitters than men and women of war in the army of the Lord. Most believers do not even understand the basic principle of how to release the anointing. So that's what we're going to cover first, and then we'll come back to laying on of hands later. So what is anointing? Pastor Spencer uses the analogy of perpetual propulsion of the power of God. Say that three times fast. <laughs> so perpetual because it's continual. Propulsion is always moving. And the power, of course, is what even Jesus said, you know, I do nothing other than the power that, Jesus, that God has put in me, the Father. So the first thing to understand is that the, the anointing is not the Holy Spirit. The anointing is power. We sing about the anointing, we pray for the anointing, we desire the anointing, but most Christians have no clue of what the anointing is. So there's an extremely important understanding that needs to be grasped. If you do not understand the anointing, then how do you know if you actually have it or when you get it, what you are going to do with it? Isaiah 10:27 says, it shall come to that it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from your neck, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. So the anointing is the energy or power that comes from the Holy Spirit to do supernatural works. This enables normal man to do work on behalf of the supernatural God. When you and I go and get a job, you expect that the company that you're going to be working for is going to have the equipment to do the job. If the company doesn't have the equipment to accomplish the job, then it would be absolute, absolute foolishness to work for them. Flip that over. Okay. The anointing is the ability that God gives you and I to work for him. When we get saved, we ask Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. Then we get baptized. Then we get the anointing. He not only tells us what to do, but he also gives us the ability, the energy, the supernatural ability to accomplish heavenly tasks. He not only calls us, he equips us. You want to read Zechariah while I find this? Sure. Zechariah 4, 6 says, So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord Zerubbabel, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. So nothing eternal can be accomplished outside of the anointing, and the anointing comes from the Holy Spirit. 
um, in the Old Testament, not everybody was anointed. We talked about that last week. Not everybody had the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. It was just the kings, the priests, and the prophets that had it. That was also every single one of those offices Jesus walked in. Yes. And he fulfilled all of those um, offices. Um, the kings in First Samuel 15, 1. Samuel also said to Saul, Lord, send me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore he heeded the voice of the words of the Lord. And the priest in Exodus 40, 13 through 15, you shall put on, put the holy garments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may minister to me as priest. And you shall also bring his sons and clothe them with tunics. You shall anoint them as you anoint their father, that they may minister to me as priests. For their anointing shall surely be an everlasting priesthood without, throughout their generations. So in the Old Testament, there was also three types of anointing. Number one was anointing with oil was part of their daily grooming. That's how they got ready for the day. When they had a guest over, it was proper etiquette to anoint their feet when they come in. And then it was used as part of preparations for burial. So when the lady, when the, yeah, she was a lady, who came in to wash Jesus' feet and anointed him before his burial, she washed his feet with the tears of her and washed them with her hair, and then she poured out the alabaster jar. Is that what? It, yeah, alabaster jar. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so Psalms 104, 14 and 15. He makes grass grow for the cattle, and plants for man to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens the heart of man, oil to make his face shine, and bread that sustains his heart. Uh, let's go to the prophets. Okay. The prophets. Uh, 2 Kings 2, 9 through 14. And so it was, when they had crossed over, that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask, what may I do for you before I'm taking away from you? Elijah said, Please let me have a double portion of your spirit upon me. So he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire. And they separated the two men. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw... And he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more, and he took a hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces. He also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen on him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And then he took the water and said, Where? He struck the water, I'm sorry, and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And he went. And he also struck the water, and was div it divided this way and that way, and Elijah crossed over. The mantle is another type of anointing. Um, years ago, Pastor Andrea's husband, Prophet Peter, um, when he had passed away, the day before we, um, I was watching one of my friend's daughters. She was hanging out with me. And we went and to the church and we vacuumed and cleaned up for the funeral. Well, we had the funeral and it was a celebration of life. There was a lot of dancing, a lot of singing, a lot of praising. And then they carried him out and they took him to the cemetery. Well, while they were gone, we were trying to prepare for things. And there was a spot on the carpet right exactly where his casket was. Mm -hmm. And it looked like it was water. But when you touched it, it, w it didn't feel like water. And 
it just felt like it was it was different feeling and it was the exact si size of the casket exactly where he was and um i believe when pastor andrea found out about it it was told to her that um the mantle had been passed from her fa her husband to her so and that has never happened before mm -hmm. but i saw i saw it and it hasn't happened since mm -hmm. um but when i saw it i made people aware of it i'm i'm in there sitting in it going i know what this is <laughs> i was like i know what it is so um and it was there for i don't know three weeks four weeks maybe afterwards and then it just kind of lifted yeah yeah but it was interesting i've never saw anything like it before or since and it was like okay yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so anointing was used for the purpose of physical healing and deliverance. Jesus anointed the sick and instructed his disciples to do so as well. John 9, verse 6, having said this, Jesus spit on the ground, made some mud with saliva, and put it, the anointed on the man's eyes, and he was able to see. Mark 6, 12, and 13 says they went out and preached that people should repent. They drove out many demons and anointed many sick people with oil and healed them. James 5, 14, and 15. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. So the anointing oil and was a basically it was demonstrating healing mm -hmm. and God's power through a conduit. So what do we mean when we say a, pe a person is anointed? When we say a person is anointed, we mean they are set apart and empowered by the Holy Spirit to accomplish what God is calling them to do. Their natural abilities and spiritual gifts are strengthened and enhanced by the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. There are two levels of anointing, an anointing for service. This comes with God's call and remains on the person until God's person is complete. The pastor is anointed to lead his church. Our worship leader is anointed to lead us in worship. Our worship team is anointed to play and to bring the anointing and to bring us into the presence of God. <clears throat> oh, yeah. So the builders of the tabernacle in Exodus 31, 1 through 5, we're on page 30 at the yep. bottom of it. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, See, I have called by name Be Bezazel, son of Uri, and the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God, and wisdom, and understanding, and in knowledge, and all manner of workmanship, to design artistic works, to work in gold, silver, and in bronze, and cutting in jewels, for setting and carving wood, and to work all manner of workmanship. So the Holy Spirit came upon them, and basically gave them the knowledge and the intuit the insight of how God wanted it done and it got accomplished that way because God imparted that to them the anointing did not abide in any of these groups except for the builders of the tabernacle the kings the priests and the prophets all had anointing come upon them but the anointing did not abide in them the anointing came on Samson and judges 15:14 when he came to Leah, the Philistines came shouting against him, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him, and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax and burned with fire, and his bonds broke and loosed his hands. So the anointing is tangible. The word tangible means to touch, it's transferable. Um, sometimes when people is, are praying on you and they lay hands on you, you can feel the power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> I can be in worship in the back, and I can feel the Holy Spirit come upon me without anyone touching me. 
and I prefer for people to pray for me. And when pastor is up here and he's preaching, I like to be back there feeling the Holy Spirit by myself without anyone touching me because I just, I don't mind people laying hands on me, but I want to know that I can feel the Holy Spirit without anybody <clears throat> touching me as well. Second mm-hmm. um, Kings 13, 20 and 21, then Elijah died and they buried him. And the raiding bands from Moab invaded the land in the spring of the year. So it was when they were burying the man that suddenly they spied a band of raiders and they put the man in the tomb of Elijah. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elijah, he revived and stood on his feet. So Elijah's anointing um, was still on his bones. Mm -hmm. Just like with Prophet Peter, when he had died and his mantle left it was on the floor his anointing um what is an amazing for us right now in the new testament is that jesus is a mediator of a new and a better covenant with better promises thank you jesus Mm -hmm. you know we, we really thought about what jesus really has done for us a lot of times we take it for granted but he gave us better bigger and i mean just he'll stand in the gap for us he's just the blood nothing speaks to sin like the blood the word and his name is jesus is i think we just take him for granted sometimes the old testament saints had the anointing come upon them but jesus but because of jesus we have the anointing biting within. So when Jesus rose up into heaven, um, he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait. And wait is one of those words that people don't like. Like, I can take no and yes better than I can take <laughs> wait. <laughs> wait, it's like, oh, here we go again. But years ago, we had a pastor over worship, and her name was uh, Pastor Newby. And she said, while you wait, you're supposed to be preparing. Mm -hmm. And I somehow had missed that whole preparing part, while you wait. And when she said that, something clicked. But still, wait is not my favorite word. (laughs) (laughs) But, I mean, when we wait, God is preparing things behind the scenes to line it up. So it's not a bad thing. We just get impatient and we're, you know, have it our way, Burger King. So, um, when we accept Jesus as our personal Savior, he comes in and lives in us by the Holy Spirit. And we become the temple of the Holy Ghost, which means you're possessed, literally, in the best way ever. (laughs) In the best way. When you lay hands on somebody and you feel the Holy Spirit coming through you on them, it's amazing just to know that God loves you so much that he trusts you to allow his spirit to come through you mm-hmm. to onto someone else so that he can touch them. I mean, he could do it by himself. He could. And he does. But, I mean, to the degree that he uses us, he didn't have to, but he wants to. That's just, that amazes me. I'm going to go check the chat because I'm not seeing anything on your phone if there's any questions or anything. Yeah, I don't think I did it right. So, there's that. Um, (laughs) Yeah. He he told me to do it. I was like, okay, but I have no clue. All right. So, that anointing abides within us because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. And the Old Testament, the anointing came upon them. But the New Testament saint, with a new and better promise, the anointing abides within you and comes out of you. And can also come upon you. Every believer is anointed. In 1 John 2.20 But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you know all things. In 1 John 2.27 But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you. 
and you do not need anyone to teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things. And it is true and is not a lie. And just as it has taught you, and you will abide in him. So the Holy Spirit will will give you direction. He'll give you insight and wisdom and understanding. Um, like he did with the people building the temple. So Jesus himself did not do anything supernatural without the anointing. So his ministry really began when he got baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him. And it says the Holy Spirit came on him like a dove. So a lot of people will associate the Holy Spirit as a dove. The Holy Spirit is not a dove. It's <laughs> like a dove. When you think of a dove, you think of a gentle bird. And, um, it's gentleness. But the Holy Spirit is, is not a dove. <laughs> it just... <laughs> That just kind of cracks me up when people um, think of that that way. So God anointed Jesus to do supernatural and to produce good works. In Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And it wasn't until he was anointed when the Holy Spirit came upon him that he was able to do supernatural exploits. So the minute that the Holy Spirit came upon him, he was also driven out into the desert to fast for 40 days and 40 nights to be tempted of the devil. And he defeated the devil by the word. With every time that the devil came at him, he defeated him with the word. But he also spent time with Jesus or with God every every day like you'd get up early you'd see you'd read in the Bible he got up and he spent time with them and they'd look for him hey. hi Colton yeah. don't play with a light <laughs> can you sit over there no. okay come on over here then you're leaving no. okay no, oh Okay, um, Luke, three, take over, all right, where are you, okay, Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon, you just read that, yeah, where'd you go, did you read this, Jesus did not do, Jesus did not do miracles because he was the son of God, he did miracles because he was the son of man, anointed by the Holy Spirit. He left all his heavenly glory and came by the Spirit. Whoa. And he came down here to live as a normal man with normal power to show us that through the anointing, we can do everything he did. And that's very important because we know when Jesus went to be with the Father, he gave us the Holy Spirit to live in us. We are possessed but we also have the same power that God had through Jesus because the same spirit that lived in him lives in us. So Philippians 2, 5 through 7. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. He was all God and all man in the same body, yet he gave up all of his heavenly power so that he could show us how to work the works of God, not from our ability, but from through the energy anointing, supernatural ability of God who lives inside of us, the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Colton just got hands laid down him in a <laughs> not spiritual way. <laughs> um, all right. Um, this is why Jesus said it would be better for him to go away. So when Jesus was on the planet, there was only one Jesus. And now that Jesus rose from the dead and is sitting at the right hand of the Father, he went to the Holy Spirit. He sent the Holy Spirit. This is the same Holy Spirit who dwelt 
inside of Jesus and now dwells inside of you. So that was the gift of Jesus, that we got the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. And now that same spirit that dwells in you, you can do what Jesus did. Amen. And Amen. Jesus said to lay hands on the sick, you can lay hands on the sick. Speak in tongues, you can speak in tongues. He said you can pick up was it scorpions and serpents. serpents. Yeah, that serpents one, I, I, I just want to skip over that one. But serpents and scorpions. Obviously, he's talking about the demonic, but yeah. it's the word serpent that kind of flips me out. Anyways, um, so John fourteen twelve says, Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do, and greater works he will do because I go to my Father. Greater not being better than, greater being more than because... He right. had left, right. and now the Holy Spirit is in us. Um, how to increase the anointing. It's important to understand that you can measure the anointing. Jesus was anointed without measure. And John 3, 4, for, whom he, for he whom God has sent speaks the words of God. For God does not give the Holy Spirit by measure. Elijah received a double portion. Um, King David was anointed three times. Yes. He was anointed first when Samuel anointed him in front of his family and his brothers. Then he was anointed when he was set king over Judah. Then he was anointed again over when he was set king over Israel. Mm -hmm. So he was anointed three different times. Yep. Yeah. Um, and we were... Who were we were watching last night? Rick Renner. Rick Renner. Rick Renner is amazing. He <laughs> goes from historical facts. He walks you through it, gives you the Greek analogy, and he he's just thorough, and he's a wonderful teacher. If mm -hmm. you ever get a chance to look him up online, his name is Rick Renner, and it's rickrenner.org. He is awesome. Um, okay, so now that we got that Rick Renner plug in, <laughs> um, Elijah received a double portion in Second Kings two nine, and so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, "Ask what I may do for you, and I, before I am taken away from you." And Elijah asked for the double portion to come upon him. So every Christian is anointed. And what's more powerful is that when you get in the corporate anointing, this is called synergy. Everybody's moving the same direction, mm -hmm. flow, um, and it's powerful. Um, and Psalms 133 declares that the corporate anointing is the, the commanded blessing. The disciples were anointed in the Gospels, but the anointing was the Old Testament principle where the Holy Spirit came upon him before Jesus um, was taken away. <clears throat> so he knew that they needed more power, so he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise of the Father. Here's that word, wait again. <clears throat> okay. All right, if you, in, if you desire to increase the anointing in your life, then there are certain things that need to be accomplished. Number one, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Acts 2, 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So before you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, though, you need to ask Christ into your life. Yes. Um, that is a prerequisite for your walk with God is right. because Jesus died to forgive us of our sins. So we can't just skip point this point and then move on. That's the foundational. Jesus is where our life begins. Right. We are in Christ. 
and we do everything in Christ, through Christ, and because of Christ, and for Christ. And even Jesus couldn't do anything until he was baptized and the Spirit came upon him. That's when his ministry actually started, so mm -hmm. he even needed the anointing of the Holy Spirit on him, so how much more would we need it? So Jesus never did anything just to do it. He always had a plan. When Jesus sent his disciples to when Jesus sent his disciples to tarry in Jerusalem until they received the promise of the Father, he knew what they were going for. It wasn't just to have a meeting or to have a little church, but to receive something they needed to fulfill the purpose of the kingdom. Jesus sent them to the upper room because they needed more power to accomplish the purpose of God. So to increase the anointing in your life, you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to have more power. Then get refilled. All through the book of Acts, you see how they got, they got filled with the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Later they were filled again. They, they asked for more anointing, more, more power. So Acts 4, 27 through 31 for truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the words of God with boldness. I don't know about you, but I need more boldness all the time because it's, it's hard to stand up for things sometimes. And So speak in tongues all the time. 1 Corinthians 14.2, speaking divine secrets. We kind of touched on this a little bit last week. 1 Corinthians 14.4, encouraging yourself. Jude 20, building yourself up in the Holy Spirit. When you pray in tongues, you are speaking spirit to spirit. Your focus is on the things above, not on the things below. Just do it. <clears throat> All right, do you remember when your child first started driving and you had to teach them? You made sure your seatbelt was real tight. Your foot went to the floor like you had a brake on your own side. If you could grab the wheel, you would have. In more than one instance, you were scared to death. When your child started out driving, they weren't that good. They had to learn distance, depth perception, and simply just how to turn the wheel at the right time. It wasn't until they started to practice that they started to understand and become good at what they were doing. Why should we think learning how to flow in the anointing and to move in the power of God is any different? If you never practice, you will never learn. That's true. Get your mic. Okay. Yeah. You got to have it so they can hear you. So when I um, first went, I went up a couple different times to get um, the gift of tongues. And um, I remember saying to Pastor Newby, this thing is not working. And she's like, and I was really new. And she goes, it comes from here. And yeah, I'm like, it's it's not speaking anything but English. And and, and she she was a real stern, very stern. person. Very, very stern. Very stern. She was n nice, but you had to know, like, when she meant business, she meant business. And, she was a uh, hard one to take. Yeah. Sometimes she was um, a little too stern. <laughs> <laughs> but she said, just open your mouth and speak. <laughs> and she yelled at me, and Pastor Mike came from the other side and said, it's okay. You know, just, you know, it'll come. Right. So where she was kind of like just do it he was like okay it'll come just relax yep. because i was getting nervous and it wasn't coming and then one day i was at my house and i was coming through the door doing something and i had just a four little word of speaking in tongues and i said it and i didn't remember 
at the time that I was speaking in tongues. And all of a sudden it hit me. I was like, oh, that's tongues. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so now I have um, a really good prayer language. But I love to hear other people speak in tongues. Mm -hmm. I just, like, sometimes I'll just shut up and not even speak in tongues so because I want to hear everybody else's prayer language. It's just really beautiful. I I just... I not love it. not that we can understand it, of course, right. but that's it's just yeah. watching people move in the spirit really is more yeah what it boils down to is watching people be used by God and being whether it's being laying hands on people or praying over people, just watching God's spirit move, especially from the back where we mostly are, <laughs> watching the congregation, what goes on, and who who gets what, you know who. God's prophesying over somebody, you want to hear that. You want to see people get laid hands on and get healed. And it just shows you God's love for everybody. Mm -hmm. That's that's how I view it, especially, like I said, usually from the back on the camera or whatever. But Well, even when we were, that one night we were in Healing Journey, um, Dan Wallenbeck, he's a pastor. He was speaking in tongues, and I was just listening. And it was so, I don't know, it just sounded so beautiful to me. I started crying. Mm -hmm. And usually when I start crying, it's the Holy Spirit because mm -hmm. I'm like God's biggest wine baby, cry baby. I cry at the, like, I know when I start crying, that's the Holy Spirit oh, yeah. coming on me. And it was just, I don't know what he said, but it just sounded so beautiful. <laughs> so, all right, where are we at? All right. <laughs> Hebrews 5:14 but solid food belongs to those who are of full age that is those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil <clears throat> and Matthew 10 7 through 8 and as you go preaching saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick cleanse the lepers raise the dead cast out demons Freely you have received, freely give. So that's what the power of the Holy Spirit is for, mm -hmm. is to do what Jesus had done. Right. Yeah, we just can't keep it all inside of us. I mean, it's, it's meant to share. It's meant to pour out and to, to bless those around you and to, to be the light that God has called us to be in this world. So. Yeah. If, you're, if you think of yourself like a, a conduit... Um, a lot of times I'll tell people, I like to be behind the scenes. I don't like to be in front of the scenes. I'm the pipe in the wall that will bring the water, and I'm fine with that, to the faucet who's <laughs> out in front. So I'm good with serving behind the scenes so that those who are in front have everything they need to mm -hmm. do their job. S but you're a conduit of the Holy Spirit. And that's a privilege and an honor. And so... <clears throat> When you are laying hands on people and when you're doing these works, you're being the conduit for Christ. Yes. Um, where are we at? Mark. Uh, he, uh, Mark 16, 15 through 20. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these, thing, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Then, they then, <clears throat> where, where am I? They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then, after the Lord spoke to them, he was received up to heaven sat down at the right hand of God, and they went out and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. So the, with that, I mean, it's got to be in Jesus' name. It can't be in Kenny's name. It can't be in Pastor Dan's name. It can't be in his tabernacle name. It has to be in the name of Jesus, and that's... And because he's the one that paid the price. Yes. And... You know, people think there are many ways to heaven. Mm. Well, no. I mean, you might think there's many ways, but just because you think it doesn't make it right. right. There are a lot of things that I have thought that weren't right at all. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it just wasn't. And then I had to be corrected. 
And it's not bad to be corrected because if you're not corrected, then you walk in sin. If you walk in sin, you're separated from the Lord. And then if you're separated from the Lord and you don't repent, you don't go to heaven because sin separates us from God. And it's just one of those things that you don't do anything when you're a Christian. If you're a real, true, God-loving Christian, you do things for Jesus in Jesus, mm -hmm. not to your own glory. Yes. All right. So let's say you buy a brand-new Lamborghini. It's red, fast, and you can't wait to get behind the wheel. You drive it out of the dealership, take it to the gas station, put high-octane gas in it, drive it to your garage, and park it. How crazy would it be if you never drove that car again? It's got all the power it needs. It has all the fuel it needs. But if you don't use it, it's worthless. And it's just like the Spirit. If you're not using your gifts that God has placed in you, you're really not benefiting you're not doing what God's called you to do. And God has equipped you. God has called you. The Kenneth more Copeland has a, has a um, scenario of that, too. Yeah. He <clears throat> has the scenario of you're given a gun to fight your enemy so that it doesn't come in the door. And I know that guns are, you know, one of those subjects. But it was to fight the enemy, trying to overcome you and take... Oh, take your home. So he said, but the gun is on the mantle and it hangs up on the wall and it's loaded and the enemy comes in and he overtakes you. And you say, but I had a gun. But it never was able to protect you because you never put it into use. Mm -hmm. That rattlesnake get you. <laughs> All right, releasing the anointing. We are finally here to laying on of hands. <laughs> so releasing the anointing can be done in various ways. According to the book of Hebrews chapter 6, there is a fundamental and a foundational principle in the releasing of the anointing. This is called the laying on of hands. Remember, this is elementary. This is just the beginning, so learning how to lay hands on and release the power and presence of God through the laying on of hands is just the beginning. The basic understanding of the laying on of hands to release the anointing is that you and I are conduits of the power of God. Think of it in this manner. If you wanted to turn the lights on in the house, there would have to be wires that would come from the transformer on the pole to the house. When the wires come into the house, they would have to go to a panel box. From the panel box, wires are distributed throughout the house and end at a light switch or plug. When you flick the light switch, the energy, the power is released into that room. And if you never turn the switch on, you'll never have any light. Um, God's heavenly supernatural energy is waiting to be released through us as his conduits into this world and when we lay hands on somebody and release the power of God it is like turning on the light switch because we can lay hands on people but if the Holy Spirit isn't in it doesn't mean a whole lot right. doesn't mean a hill of beans <laughs> I don't even know where that <laughs> hill of beans comes from <laughs> yeah. um, Jesus uses the principle of laying on hands Laying hands on people to release the power of God. In Matthew eight fourteen through 15. Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand and the fever left her and she arose and served them. So it was immediate. She was healed. In Matthew 8, 3, then Jesus put his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. So we know that healing is the will of God. Mm -hmm. And we know that it is, Jesus had done many exploits and laying out of hands and many miracles and signs and wonders. But um, I lost my train of thought. So we'll just continue on. Um, 
Speaking the word is another manner to release the anointing. Matthew 8, 5 through 10. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. It's amazing. He understood the power behind the authority mm -hmm. that Jesus had. Yep. Because he also knew that when he said to men that I won't, you go here and do this, they did it. But he also knew that Jesus' authority was even more powerful. Mm -hmm. And he believed. That is awesome. Um, tangible transfer through objects. Acts 19, 11 through 12. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even handkerchief or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them with evil spirits went out of them. Um, I have done this before too. I've taken Pastor Mike's hanky. I also had a hank, uh, handkerchief um, from Robert or Rod Parsley and when my dad was having um, surgery I took a little piece of the cloth from Rod Parsley and I stuck it under the tape of his IV and I prayed over him and he went in and he came out and he he did really well his recovery went really well um, God really moved yep. and it was you know part of that was prayer and part of that was um, the cloth with the anointing on it I've heard something said before about the authentic hankies mm -hmm. the way they put oh yeah mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, people come up all the time after service to get them. And <laughs> They're a hot commodity for somebody's <laughs> bed. <laughs> but it's anointed, so, you know. Yes. I mean, Jesus spit on people. He's spitting mud and put it on people's eyes. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, spit on hankies, not that bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there was an evangelist who was getting ready to preach the word of God, and a woman ran up to him and gave him a piece of candy. He looked at her and said, thank you very much. She said, no, no, you don't understand. That's not for you. My sister is in an insane asylum, and they steal everything from her except her candy. I want you to... Yeah. Wow, what happened there? Yeah. Okay, I want you to... Suck on the candy now and then again after you preach and send it to my sister so she can be free from those demons. After service, she ran up and got the candy and sent it to her sister. Within 10 days, she was completely free and in her right mind and released from the asylum. So the power of God is, is definitely tangible. It is transferable. <clears throat> So Pastor Spencer says, when I was in Bible school, Ted Shuttlesworth came and had some services. The pastor of the church of the Bible school was a very boring preacher, and the students used to make fun of him. Ted Shuttlesworth stood up and declared, some of you students are making fun of this old man, but he has more anointing in his coat than you have in your whole life. If you want a portion of that anointing, get up here. Brother Shuttlesworth held one arm of the coat, and the pastor, the other arm. Anyone who wanted the anointing needed to go underneath that coat. I was the first in line, and when we hit the coat, the power of God was released. The energy of heaven let loose, and people's lives were changed. There were 500 people either dancing or out in the Holy Ghost when they hit that coat. I witnessed that myself. One evangelist used to send out newsletters to his supporters, and he prayed over those newsletters. And then he went and sent them out, anointed of the Holy Spirit. A lady in Africa received her newsletter, and when she did, the anointing healed her body through the tangible anointing. 
spitting. Hmm. <laughs> so one thing on that real quick, though. We've seen preachers on TV, oh, send me $100 and I'll send you this hanky. And I mean, is there anointing in it? Possibly, but God doesn't charge you for the anointing. And that's that's something, I mean, that's there for, it's a free gift. God gave it to us to use. We don't need to pay somebody on TV to, to get something like that. So, go ahead. And I didn't pay for the Rod Parsley anointing. <laughs> No. Just FYI. Um, okay, so here we are at spitting. <laughs> huh. I know this one is not popular for obvious reasons, but Jesus did it more than once. And if you do this these days, you better know God, especially since, you know, 2020 and all the hoopla <laughs> and the pandemic and all that stuff. Mark 7, 33 through 35. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears and he spat and he touched his tongue. And then he looked up. <laughs> then he looked up to heaven and he sighed and said to him, Yeah, a patha. Mm. That is, be open. Immediately his ears were opened, and the impediment of his tongue was loose, and he spoke plainly. Mm -hmm. So, you gotta think a minute. Someone spitting on your tongue so you can talk? It'd be worth it. It'd be kind of gross, but worth it. <laughs> and his ears were open. So, if you're deaf, I had a deaf sister, and I always prayed that she would be healed from her deafness, and it didn't work out that way, but she's in heaven now, and she can hear and dance and talk, and, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, sometimes things don't happen in a manner which you would like, but there's not a whole lot of that spitting thing going on these days. <laughs> so, one day, when I was listening to some great stories of the evangelists that traveled America. I heard a story about the spitting evangelists. And when we would pray for people, he would spit on them, and miraculously they would be healed. One day he was preaching in the back hills of America, and he came upon a man who was born with one arm shorter than the other. The short arm not only came down to where the elbow would be, but he spit on that arm and laid hands on the man and commanded the arm to grow. In front of everyone, the, super, the arm supernaturally grew and to normal length with a hand on the end. So that's a miracle. Um, and again, worth it. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have an arm or a hand and that happened to you, you would be like, it's worth it. So I guess you, if you really need a miracle, it doesn't matter how you get it, as long as you get it. Okay. One thing I want to touch on on here, I got to find it. Where is it? So Kenny's got one of our first um, books that when we first come into his tab, it was called Catechism. And so we have pages out of that book that he's also referring to, so that when he is reading some from here and also some yep. from the new book that Pastor Mike had wrote. All right, so one of the things we've been talking about laying out of hands, but one thing I want to touch on real quick is why we must be careful about who ministers to us. We don't want just anybody walking up and laying hands on us. When you open yourself up to receive ministry, you will receive whatever the minister has to offer in the spirit realm. If they are godly men or women, their impartation to you will be pure. If they carry an impure spirit, you could be in danger of being contaminated with that spirit. If someone you don't know wants to minister to you and they leave you feeling uneasy in your spirit, politely decline. So yeah, I mean, just because somebody says, hey, I want to pray over you, all right, who are you first off? 
let's go get the pastor. Let's let's make this. I mean, that's one of the biggest things. Whether it's somebody speaking a word over your life, whether it's somebody laying hands on you, don't be afraid. Well, let's go get the pastor, and we'll we'll talk about this together. Because if if they're on the up and up, they'll say fine, whatever you know. If they're I've seen other people, oh, no, no, we can't do that. Just come here. Let's go over here. No. All right, thank you, but no, no thank you. And it's happened. Yes. It's happened plenty of times. So um, the parking lot evangelism or laying out of hands yeah. and stuff, that if you're on the up and up, like Kenny said, you won't mind coming under authority. Yep, absolutely. Because in order to be in authority, you have to be under authority. And if it's a real thing, then the pastor can confirm it yes. as well. So we'll do the shadow and then we'll end with that one. So Acts 5, 14 and 15. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. So they were getting healed just as Peter was walking down the street because of the anointing. So we'll mark it point of contact for okay. next week. And the anointing increases too. When you spend time with Jesus, you spend time in the word and you're growing, your anointing mm -hmm. will increase. Yep. Because God can trust you. And as you, if you don't understand something, ask yep. and get that information. Don't believe something that you think is right and it might not be right. It may be right and it might not be. But if you have questions, ask. There's nothing wrong with asking. It's better than believing something that could lead you down a wrong path. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All questions are good, especially online. Any questions before we end tonight? Have any, questions? any questions in here? How about you, Terry? You got any questions? No? Okay, well, nobody well, online? We got, I don't see anybody. I'll go back here and check it back here, but close us out in prayer in a minute. And Bruce says, thank you. You're welcome, Bruce. Any questions? I don't see any. Father God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Father God, that you love us so much, that you sent Jesus to die for our sins, and that he paid a price we could not pay. And as he went to be with you, you also sent the Holy Spirit to be with us. And we just thank you that we are your conduits and we can carry the Holy Spirit with us. And we invite you, Holy Spirit, to go with us every day and be lead us and guide us through this life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And also don't forget that we will have Pastor Mindy Spencer wow. coming this Sunday yes. for service. So, so this Sunday, bring a friend, bring whoever, and we'll see you under the tent. Oh, you have a mic. I thought of you were just talking Of course I have a bigger. mic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you all. Have a good night.